we're going to be looking at the origin and evolution of the universe. The redshift of light from galaxies provided the first evidence that the universe was expanding and Hubble proposed his law using this evidence in 1929. Lemaitre proposed in 1927 that if you rewind an expanding universe you'll eventually get a day without yesterday, that is the start of the universe. And so he proposed the idea of the Big Bang Theory. The universe was concentrated at a singularity, that is, it's infinitesimal in size and infinitely dense. So infinitesimal is a very small approaching zero in size. And so the resulting infinite pressure and temperature caused the universe to expand and it's still expanding today. The Big Bang Theory predicts that the gamma radiation that was initially formed at the Big Bang has since cooled down to a gentle microwave radiation. So that is the high frequency gamma radiation has stretched as space time has expanded, so the wavelength of the radiation has increased so that it's now in the microwave region. And Penzance and Wilson accidentally discovered that the irritating microwave radiation that was detected by the radio telescopes that they were using actually came from space. And it was the radiation that was predicted from the Big Bang Theory. And this radiation was uniform in all directions. And they were awarded a Nobel Prize in Physics for their accidental discovery because it provided strong evidence for the Big Bang Theory. So this is an image of the cosmic microwave background radiation obtained during a year-long sweep of the sky. And the differences in colour show the tiny fluctuations, which are known as ripples, in intensity. The spectrum of the cosmic microwave background radiation has a characteristic temperature of 2.7 Kelvin. So this is the average temperature of the universe. And that's because the universe is mostly empty space. And the tiny fluctuations represents a difference in temperature of 30 micro Kelvins. Other evidence that supports the Big Bang Theory is the high abundance of helium in the universe. The visible matter, that is what we can see in the universe, stars and galaxies, contains about 27% of helium. Fusion of hydrogen nuclei into helium nuclei only accounts to 2 to 3%. So the remaining helium was formed in the first few minutes after the Big Bang, and this helium is known as primordial helium. Also, we know the universe has evolved from particle accelerator experiments, for example, the experiments at CERN. So at the start of the universe, it was a singularity, and then from naught to 10 to the minus 43 seconds, we have no theory to explain what happened. But we know that the fundamental forces were all united, so that is electromagnetic force, the gravitational force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. And there was a cosmic inflation, a massive increase in the size of the universe. And 
one microsecond after the Big Bang, gamma radiation was formed and the fundamental particles of matter was formed. So we had a soup of leptons and quarks. A millisecond after the Big Bang, the quarks combined to form hadrons, that is protons and neutrons. And then a few minutes after the Big Bang, the protons and neutrons combined to form hydrogen and helium nuclei. So hydrogen nuclei would be the tritium and deuterium. And the helium nuclei would be our primordial helium, which accounts for the high abundance of helium in the universe. Then it takes a long while later, the nuclei and electrons combine to form atoms. And then millions of years later after the Big Bang, stars and galaxies are formed because the gravitational force can take over. And approximately 15 billion years from the Big Bang, where the average temperature of the universe is 2.7 Kelvin, we get an approximate age of the universe and representing the time now. So we can see as time has moved on, the temperature of the universe has decreased and the matter that is formed has started from the smallest to the biggest. And in March 2014, scientists announced the detection of gravitational waves that were predicted due to the cosmic inflation, the rapid expansion of the universe, 10 to the minus 37 seconds after the Big Bang. So this represents the latest evidence that supports the Big Bang theory. And finally, the contents of the universe. 4% is visible matter, so that's the stars and the galaxies, anything that we can see. 23% is dark matter, so things that have mass but that we can't see, so for example, black holes. And then 73% is dark energy. We don't know a lot about this dark energy. So actually, 96% of the universe is unknown. Isn't that amazing? We actually know very little.